everyone hope you all are doing great this is gayatri welcome you all to bio school in today's video we will see hans spemann's experiment on embryonic induction and also the question related to this topic so guys please be with me till the end of the video thank you Spemann's experiment on embryonic induction in early amphibians the determination of the amphibian axis or the formation of amphibian axis is the example of regulative development or conditional specification regulative development or conditional specification means what the cell becomes that depends on its position in the embryo that is the cell fate is determined by the neighboring cells is known as the regulative development and conditional specification okay where the blastomeres has the potency that is greater than its normal embryonic fate and the cell fate is determined by the interaction between the neighboring cells the requirement for inductive interaction in amphibian axis determination was demonstrated by Hans Spemann's and for that he got Nobel prize in the year 1935 okay so now we'll see what are the Hans Spemann's experiment that leads to the determination of the amphibian axis in the first experiment he demonstrated that only neuter blastomeres have identical nuclei and is capable of producing an entire larva so this is the first experiment by the hans spemann what he did he took a nude egg shortly after the fertilization and used the baby hair to lasso the zygote in the plane of first cleavage okay so by using a baby's hair he lasso the zygote in the plane of first cleavage he then partially constricted the egg causing all the nuclear division to remain in one side of the constriction here you can see that all the nuclei they are present in the one side of the egg but eventually at 16 cell stage a nucleus escape from the nucleated site to the non nucleated site and cleavage is begin on the other side too okay so then spemann tightened the lasso until the two halves were completely separated then what he observed he observed that twin larvas are developed and one larva is more advanced than the other one at 14 days so from this experiment spemann concluded that only amphibian nuclei were genetically identical and that each cell is capable of giving rise to an entire organism in the second experiment which was the quite similar to the first experiment but it is perpendicular to the plane of first cleavage okay and he obtained a different result altogether nuclei continue to divide on on both the side of constriction but only one side the future dorsal side of the embryo give rise to a normal larva whereas the other side the ventral cell okay that forms a unorganized tissue mass and that tissue mass is called as the both stick the belly piece so what do you think why this result is different there may be the one possibility that when the egg was divided perpendicular to the first cleavage plane so some of the cytoplasmic substances which is known as the gray crescent okay the cytoplasmic substance is known as the gray crescent was not equally distributed into two halves and that half which contain the gray crescent that develop into the normal embryo whereas that other part which lack the gray crescent that develop into a belly piece and the spemann concluded that only the blastomere contain in the gray crescent that develops normally okay so here in the diagram it is in the first cleavage then in the second cleavage what happens here the gray crescent is equally divided into two halves so both are develop into the normal larva whereas here in diagram you can see the gray crescent is present only in the one side it is not equally 
distributed in two halves. So that half which contains the grey crescent that develops into the normal whereas the other side that lacks the grey crescent it develops into the belly piece. Okay. This is the second experiment by Spemans. So what is the third experiment by the Spemans? Spemans speculated that the importance of the grey crescent material lies its ability to initiate the gastrulation. Okay. In the gastrulation, so the embryonic induction depends on the interaction of the cells that are arranged during the process of the gastrulation. And Spearman speculated that the importance of the grey crescent material lies its ability to initiate the gastrulation and that crucial changes in cell potency occur during the gastrulation. Okay, that is because of the grey crescent. Okay. So in 1918, he performed the experiment and in that experiment, he found that the only gastrulas are uncommitted. This is very important. The only gastrulas are the uncommitted, but the fate of the late gastrulas were determined. Okay. The only gastrula fate is uncommitted, whereas the fate of the late gastrula are the committed or it is Determine like uh, when we are in the childhood uh, what we want to become that depends on the environment but when we are grown off then what we want to become that depends on us and that is quite determined okay similarly in the early gastrula the cell head it is uncommitted and that depends on the uh, neighboring cells okay whereas the uh, late gastrula whereas the late gastrula cells are the determined okay only nude gastrula cells they exhibit the regulative development or that is the conditional development where the cell fate is determined by the neighboring cell but when the same experiment was conducted with the late gastrula the spaman obtained a def different result because the late gastrulas are autonomous specification and the development is mosaic so the cell fate is here autonomous depends on itself okay so here in diagram you can see that uh, this is the condition in the early gastrula okay so presumptive neural ectoderm okay this one is the presumptive neural ectoderm it will form the neural and it was transplanted and uh, it was transplanted into the presumptive epidermis region Okay, it is transplanted into the presumptive epidermis region. So, what it develops? It forms the epidermis instead of the neural ectoderm because here the cell head is determined by is the neighboring cell. It shows that only gastrula development is a conditional type of conditional specification or regulative development. But in the late gastrula, when the same experiment was conducted, so here instead of formation of the epidermis what it forms it forms the neural tissue okay it forms the neural tissue so here the specification is autonomous and the development is mosaic development okay in the early gastrula early gastrulas are the uncommitted uncommitted and uh, Specification is conditional specification and development is regulative development. Whereas in the left gastrula, the cell fate is committed. It is the autonomous specification. Autonomous specification and the development is mosaic development. So this is the summary. In the early gastrula, if the donor region is the prospective neuron and it is placed into the host region that would become the epidermis. So the differentiation of donor tissue it will be the epidermis because in the early gastrula it is the conditional development and the cell head is determined by the neighboring cells present in the host cell. So it develops epidermis instead of the neuron. Similarly, in early gastrula, if we take the epidermis and place it into the prospective neuron of the host region, then what will it forms? 
it will forms the neuron okay because of the conditional development but in late gastrula the result is quite different if you take the prospective neuron and placed it into the epidermis region of the host region then it will develop neurons okay instead of the epidermis because here the cell fate is determined and the development is autonomous development similarly if you take the epidermis from the late gastrula and placed into the prospective neuron then it will develop into the epidermis region not the neuron okay because of commitment of the cell and autonomous development so now you have the clear idea about the experiments all the experiments and now we will see the previous year's CSI net question this is the question which of the interference given below would you draw from the following tissue transplantation experiment performed with early and late gastrula stage of the nude okay so this is the host region this is the donor region and here it is the differentiation of donor tissue okay so from the donor region we will see first the condition in the early gastrula so in early gastrula in the donor region they taken the epidermis and it is placed into the prospective neuron of the host region okay epidermis is taken and it is placed into the host that becomes the neuron so what it developed and the donor tissue is differentiated into the epidermis it is here in early gastrula it is differentiated into the epidermis okay similarly in the second condition the prospective okay uh, prospective neuron it is taken and it is placed into the prospective epidermis of host region so it develops the neuron so what you mark here actual fact is that the early gastrula they show the conditional development okay but here conditional uh, conditional development means the development is determined by the neighboring cells but here what you see here the early gastrula the cell fate is determined it develop is the own cell fate like if it has the epidermis then in the host cell it, the donor tissue is differentiated into epidermis so in this condition the early gastrula it shows the autonomous development okay so this is the tricky question we know that the spamens experiment is tells us that early gastrula that always shows the conditional specification okay conditional specification or the regulatory development but here in the scenario is the so the autonomous development okay let's see what the condition in the late gastrula in the late gastrula the epidermis is taken from the donor region and it is transplanted into the prospective neuron okay and what it develops here the donor tissue it forms the neuron okay um, here the cell fate is determined by the neighboring cells present in the host cell so what type of development it is it is the conditional development it's not the is the conditional development similarly let's see the um, option 2 also the neuron is taken from the donor region and it is placed into the prospective epidermis and what the develop the donor tissue it is differentiated into epidermis into epidermis means differentiation of the donor tissue is depends on the neighboring cells of the host cell so it also show the conditional development okay so this is the tricky question so before answering the question you have to read the question twice okay we know that the early gastrula it show the conditional development but in the late gastrula that show the autonomous development but here the scenario is different okay according to this scenario here the early gastrula it shows the autonomous development where the late gastrula it shows the conditional development okay, let's see the options cells of the early nude gastrula it exhibit conditional development no cells of the early nude gastrula it exhibit the autonomous development yes cells of the late nude gastrula exhibit conditional development late nude gastrula exhibit conditional development yes cells of the late nude gastrula exhibit autonomous development no so the correct inference okay as for this question the co is correct answer is q and r that is option b
okay sometimes the question just modify to confuse us so be careful while answering the questions hope you guys enjoy this video and if you like this video then please share and subscribe with your friends bye bye see you in my next video and the next video it is very important that is on the organizer and mechanism of amphibian axis formation Thank you.